Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar topic of unlocking business value in digital twins for the Indian construction industry. So, in this session, we will look into first initially the introduction of the Indian construction industry and moving on to understand what a digital twin is. And we'll look after a few key challenges in the Indian construction industry and then moving further to the concept of how to build a digital twin and then look at its maturity scale and then the core topic which is about getting the business value by implementing digital twin and we'll just wrap up with some final thoughts okay. so to begin let's talk about few construction industry in india so how it plays the crucial role in the country's economic growth and also the infrastructure development. So I'll just begin with a few key announcements that were done by the government of India in financial 23. So it announced in the budget of 23 year a people-centric agenda with seven priorities known as the subrishis. So among them, the first priority was for the infrastructure and investment, and below are its key points. So it's said to continue the 50 year interest loans to the state governments, which significantly enhanced the outlay of 1.3 trillion. And among that, the railway's capex outlay of INR was around 2.4 trillion, which was the highest ever, I would say nine times of what was in back in 2013. And an extra 100 billion INR for the urban development. It is bound to make an investment of 50 additional airports, heliports, water add-ons, and advanced land zones to be revitalized and to generate 100 critical transport infra projects with an investment of INR 750 billion, including INR 150 billion from the private sources. Now let's look at a few key facts about construction industry in India. So it's at standard size of INR 10.5 trillion and it accounts for around 8% of the nation's GDP and employs closely around 57.5 million people. So these figures give us the idea at what magnitude the Indian construction industry is growing and why we need to adopt technology to reduce risk, wastage, and build and deliver a better built environment. So this is another fact says the bad construction data cost the industry 1.8 trillion dollars worldwide why we are looking at this fact is because data is the bedrock of today's webinar core topic which is digital win so now as we know the facts and figures related to the construction industry and the cost of bad data let's move forward to explore the digital twins so coming to the definition, so the concept of digital twin is becoming more and more familiar among the practitioners, but still there is a lack of universal definition of what a digital twin of a construction industry is. So the issue with the definition is that even though there are some principles that have been published around the concept, exactly what a digital twin is, is still open to interpretations. So I'll just a few definitions which are given by the industry groups and the big players. So the first definition here is by the Digital Twin Consumerium Group. So it says a digital twin is a virtual representations of the real world entities and the processes which are synchronized at a specific frequency and fidelity. So there's one more definition by the IBM Group. So it says the digital twin is a virtual representation of an object or system that spans its life cycle and is updated from the real-time data and uses simulation, machine learning, and reasoning to help the decision making. So in this current scenario, we are in a phase where there are loads of definitions that people have come up with. And I would say those definitions are fighting for a supremacy. And we at this apex think that Having one sentence definition really isn't the justice. So being able to describe digital twin well is more useful to the industry than having a, just a single definition. Okay, so next we'll just want to know the 
definition of a digital twin in the construction. So a digital twin is the combination of a computational model and data from the real world systems, which are designed to monitor, control, and optimize the functionality of a built asset. So the digital twin in construction basically made up of components. So at the broader level, these are three components. The first is the visualization layer or the vision element, which is usually comprised of the BIM models, the 3D geometry, and also there's the 2D information, which are the drawings, which can be visualized. The second component is the real world building systems. So like we have the BMS systems, the CAPM systems, the SCADA systems, and all those that get integrated within the building. So this is the systems which provide the static data along with the dynamic. So the third is some of the sample use cases. So we talked about things like we are saying is utilizing the digital twins to get a measure of what your building is doing and how it is behaving. And then try to optimize that for things like achieving net zero carbon or for reducing the operation cost. But along with that also allows you to repurpose your building for renovation and the end of life cycle. So more slides. Yeah, here will be a few key challenges which the Indian construction industry has been facing. The first one being the low productivity. So due to outdated construction methods and lack of mechanization, there's this limited adoption of modern technologies in our industry. The second is the regulatory and the legal challenges. So due to cumbersome regulatory processes, complex land acquisition laws, and legal disputes, this add complexities and delays to the construction projects. Third challenge is the skilled labor shortage. So most construction workers are unskilled and the Indian industry with the stands with the casual labor accounting for 80% of the entire sector workforce, thus affecting the quality and the pace of construction. Fourth challenge is of the inadequate infrastructure. So the lack of transportation and logistics always hinders the smooth process or the flow of construction materials and the equipment impacting the overall project timelines and its efficiencies. The challenge I would say is the fragmented supply chain. So the construction supply chain in India is always fragmented. So this is a global challenge and it leads to inefficiencies, delays and difficulties in coordination between the different stakeholders. Sixth challenge is the quality control and defects. So in order to ensure consistent quality standards and minimize the construction defects, this has been always a persistent challenge and accepting rework has become industry standard. So if any owners doesn't receive any change orders or any rework, in their whole construction process. They were really astonished. So I would say this is more of a mindset with the whole industry has adopted that there has to be a rework, right? So with all these challenges in the sector, let's see what are the barriers that are a hindrance in adopting the digital twin in the Indian construction industry. So the first barrier is the resistance to change, or I would say it's the mindset to change. So the owners and stakeholders resistance to change and it's always they're adopting the traditional mindset. This poses a challenge in convincing them to adopt digital twins in their projects. Second is the contractual and legal challenges. So incorporating information management requirements or the ownership of data and its liability issues into the project contracts presents both the contractual and also the legal challenges. Third barrier is the cost and return on investment. The construction projects often operate at a very tight budget and convincing the stakeholders about the long-term benefits and return on investment of digital twin has always been a challenge. The fourth barrier is the skilled workforce and its training upskilling the existing workforce to use the digital twin tools and technologies associated with it is always a significant challenge. The fifth barrier is the limited technology adoption. 
the industry traditionally relies on conventional method and has been slow to adopt technologies due to the limited awareness and having an understanding of it. Sixth barrier is lack of internal expertise. So this is more related to the owners. So the owners lack in-house expertise to effectively manage and utilize the data that is to be generated for the digital twin throughout the project life cycle. So this leads to no data development and handle process which are to be set by the owners contractually at the start of the project. So now as we are aware of the barriers and the problems in the industry, let's see how a digital twin is to be built and with this how we can solve the challenges of the industry. So building a digital twin has basically five basic models which you can see on your left. Okay. And the first module is about going through a digital twin consultancy. Okay, so in this model, it has basically four steps. So the first step is about defining the goals during which the owners need to define their vision, the use cases, why they want to implement a digital twin and set up the information management processes, which are the document generations of the exchange information requirements, which are the combination of the organization project and the asset information requirements. So the next step for this is to generate a data repository wherein the owners need to implement and integrate a common data environment, which will act as a single source of truth for all the data that will be generated for the project. And the third step is in this workflow is to modify the contracts uh, during which the owners have to integrate the project and the asset information 3D models as a part of the delivery. And they should also focus on transparency and risk sharing, along with capitalizing the cost of dissertation and the technology when setting up also their project budgets. The fourth step is a stakeholder engagement, wherein the owners need to educate and train their own resources and also their stakeholders to upskill them and assist in the journey of a shift in the mindset. So this has also come up with the measuring and rewarding of the technology adoption across the complete projects. And this overall goals should be set with designing with the end in mind. Right. So moving on to the next model, which is about the virtual model. So this is basically a workflow which starts at before the concepts design all the way to have the asset model, which will be used by the facility team. So here the workflow is supposed to be streamlined by the owner's intent of whatever they brief in their contractual languages. And into the design model, it has to be embedded by the design consultants of whatever they agree contractually with the owners. Further moving on with that model coordination by the general contractors and moving further in development of the graphical and the non graphical data within the model by the trade contractors. Okay, so this specific information model requires a very consistent data flow to maintain the data accuracy sufficiently and interoperably. So during the handover, the owners receives a facility model or the asset information model that can be given as an input to the FM team for the FM integration and the whole workflow of things we call this as the master data management. So let's move to the third model which is of the two sensors. So this is a very important component in building the digital twin platform and we have again the four stages for this. The first is to install or different kind of sensors. It might be the security line, the energy metering or the cleaning HVAC, lightning, FPS monitoring. And all the sensors are installed will be from different manufacturers. So once the sensors are installed, then all these controllers and sensors will give different types of data with different frequencies and different units and different schedules. So we need to set up a data gateway to absorb all the data 
and make it standardized. So which acts as a holding thread. It might be a .json or any other formats. And then ship it to a CMSS platform, which we use as the Gremlin Manager. So this is the Finland made software. So which acts as an end to showcase what is the current condition of the different functions of the building. So this acts as the front end of the overall processes. So the next module is the CMSS platform itself. So the first step in implementing a CMSS platform for the digital twin, we should identify the assets. So we are clear that not everything inside a model or a building or a facility is going to be considered as an asset. For just to give an example, if uh, there's a very expensive TV in your lobby and it costs around thousands of dollars, but you don't want to consider it as an asset because sometimes if there is a fault, so you would call a technician, fix it, or get it replaced, right? But on the other side, you have a very inexpensive pump or a wall which is connected or acts in a function of your fire protection system. So that this you need to put in into your preventive maintenance list and this actually acts as an asset. So we need our clients to have a practical way to do the asset identification. So once we finish what is an asset and what's not an asset, we are now going to start the integration of the building management system and the building automation system so that each sensors or controllers, meters, or any other detection methods will be assigned to an asset or a space. So once the integration is over, so all the integrated data is going to be displayed and also the integrated along with the 3D models, which will use either the guide or the asset number, which is fed into the 3D model, gets connected with the assets. So at the front end of the software of the CMMS, you'll actually see what the readings from the meters look like. And once we click on a specific asset, so it takes you within the 3D model and shows the as is surrounding, uh, taking like a normal use case. So if any technicians has to carry out a maintenance activity, he can take a tour of the virtual model and also gather all the asset data, the manuals, the checklist, and the other data that will benefit the technician during the preventive maintenance schedule visit at the site. Or with other features such as the work orders, logging or long-term planning, raising service requests, energy management, all these features of the same SS platform can be utilized over here. So the last module, this, this is an interesting feature, especially for the residential and office spaces that can be considered as a part of a digital twin and actually is very uh, highly demanded area of service. So in order to achieve and implement this, well, there are four stages again. So the first is the owner's need to define a very clear goal. So why they want a real estate digital twin implementation, whether they do want to do a space management or I would say streamline the rental processes or attract clients, or just like a visualization database or visualizing the big screen dashboards or any other things. Because the requirements or the need in this area are so diverse, the owners need to have very defined goals. So then, they need to start the data collection. So if you want to do the space management, you need to have all the space information, the first part with zone names, the arrangement, the prices, et cetera. And the same thing applies to the leasing data, to the space usage. So then it's about integration. So what kind of dashboard you want to set up, what kind of connections between your backend database and your front-end platform you want to do or how you want to link your model and your database. Because now the database is not only coming from the variety of models, it's coming from your own database, which are even in the form of spreadsheets. So you need to work with the current data and 
find the integration to make everything and assemble together. And eventually there's this dashboard or the big screen for the data analytics, which is going to showcase everything in terms of data visualization, data reporting, KPIs, measurements, and threads, holds, notifications, etc. So these are all the basic steps in building a digital twin in the construction industry. So coming to digital twin maturity scale. So when people ask us, am I ready for the digital twin journey or where do I stand or am I at the right stage of it? So in order to explain this, there's this maturity model that's out there. So this will explain where your current organization stands at stage zero so this is kind of your traditional approach where you get specs and plans and you get the pdf documents and it's handed over at the end of the construction so purely a traditional way and then you advance into stage one so this is known as the digital artifact so now you have something that has a little bit more intelligence to it and have manually collected data and are able to piece it or gather it together. So the stage two now becomes the digital records, meaning you have a record of what the facility looks like at the end of a construction and innovation, and it is all in a digitally readable format. So then we get into the stage three, which is the digital automation. So now we are starting to put sensors and starting to read the data that gets in the system to the sensors. So then you have what is known as the digital learning stage, which is the stage four. So this becomes the stage where you get into learning phase, wherein you know you start to see things like machine learning models and how does this apply to the overall process. Then you go into the stage five, which is digital autonomy, which is really now the print to analytics. And you really understand of where the facility is going and you know what needs to be done in the facility. So integration of the advanced AI into the digital twin enables autonomous decision making and equips the twin with the ability to make decisions and also I would say take action on its physical asset given certain conditions. So it's again an upward trend line for all of this. Yeah, the facilities are continuing to improve and generate value and progress along all of these various stages. So now to the core topic of realizing the business value in digital twin. So I would say now let's see how we can gain value starting from our engineering stage to the operational maintenance. So to the first during the engineering stage. So if there is a scenario wherein all the disciplines are integrated design and the whole process is stimulated, and also the coordination is happening between all the participants. So the value that you gain is improved design and quality and efficiency. So how do we measure this value? So the evaluation indexes are if we are gaining approximate 100% of the building function rationality, and also if there is a 50% reduction in the design cycle, then you have achieved this value of improved design and quality and efficiency. So during the procurement stage, if there's a smart supply and procurement. And also, you will gain digital credit information and gaining supply chain finance. So the value gained is of integrating and optimizing the supply chain and also constructing a transparent value chain. So you recognize this when you have achieved an 80% increase in supply demand matching efficiency and also a 60% reduction in the credit service cost. Go to the next stage, it's about the construction process. So, if there's an area where the process priority is scheduling and also there's a smart construction site in building, so the value that you gain is improving the construction quality, reducing project cost, 
and also increasing the efficiency. So you get to know this when there is a 70% reduction in the engineering changes and a 50% increase in the management efficiency along with an 80% reduction in the engineering works. During the delivery and the phase, if you do a detailed delivery of the completed works, then the value gained is of constructing the project with complete digital assets and this supports your smart operation and maintenance. You realize this when there is a 50% increase in the construction efficiency in terms of the operations and the maintenance model digitally. Going to the last stage of construction building, which is the operation and maintenance. So in the scenario where there is a predictive maintenance and personalized and accurate service has been implemented. So the value that we get is improving quality of the operation and maintenance services, thus reducing the operation and the maintenance cost. And you realize you have achieved this when there's an appropriate zero equipment failure rate along with the 20% reduction in operation and the maintenance cost. So these are the values that we realize at each and every stage of constructions and the built environment for implementing our digital twin. Okay. So with all these concepts of implementation in digital twin, so I will just focus on why was the suffix form or why does this exist? So the suffix has a vision to create a sustainable built environment and solve the construction industry problems and its challenges. So how do we do it? So we are on a mission to enable the digital adoption and integration of technology to achieve a target value design. And for all this, our core approach has been to invest and implement in the latest construction technology, adopt the best information processes, and our core pillar of transformation has been our people. They have been at the forefront to adopt and implement this approach to our customer, thus helping them to reduce risk, time, and the overall cost. And with all this adding value to the lives of the people and its organization. So get in touch with Desapex to explore the journey of building a digital twin and learn from the use cases of the projects that we have been executing to our customers in the Indian construction sector. So the final thoughts of this webinar, if companies have a comprehensive BIM approach, considering assets and operation in mind, and also including the as-built reality capture processes and other technologies, then BIM effectively delivers the first half of the digital twin for free. The second thought is as digital twin is synonymous with being the latest enterprise buzzword, implementing will always seem to be daunting. But digital twin, I would say is essentially just another name for a digital strategy. If your company is at a level of digital maturity, when it is capable of capturing, storing, and understanding the data that is on overall basis aligned and supports to the business goals, then I would say you are already on the right path of delivering an effective digital twin strategy. The last thought is a digital twin can only be successful if it is fed by the right data. And that is not only down to the information management systems, it requires the workforce or the people being able to read, understand, create, and communicate the data as the information. In other words, people need to be data literate. Thank you.